You know, it didn't have to be this way. The microcosmos is vast, and there are so many organisms meeting and interacting with each other every day, and things often go very well for the microbes we watch. They often live peaceful lives that do not end with them being gruesomely turned into the external stomach of a single-celled parasite. Heck, we could even be talking about the ciliate up on the screen right now, called the nasula. Only we could have gone back to when it looked more like this, the inside of its body dripping with blue, yellow, and black. And we could have been sitting here talking about how Nasula swim through clouds of plankton seeking out their next meal of cyanobacteria, and how after the Nasula capture and digest their prey, their cytoplasm fills with the colors that once belonged to the cyanobacteria. Beads of blue and blobs of yellow and sometimes even bits of pink. A colorful casualty of consumption. But no. We are not here today to talk about cyanobacteria and pigments. We have other matters to discuss, because somewhere else in the microcosmos is this. I know it might not look like much, just a pill with a vacuole opening and closing inside it while little tufts of hair move on the surface. This is a suctorian, a type of ciliate, which makes it a relative of the nasula. But this is a young suctorian, a larvae. Eventually, the suctorian will shed its rings of cilia and in the process, it will lose both its family resemblance and its ability to swim around. But that's not a concern for the Suctorian. The ciliate that should be more worried is the Nasula, because a hairless Suctorian doesn't stay bald. It replaces its cilia with tentacles. And this is what happens next. Remember, the Suctorian can't swim anymore. It can't go seek a ciliate, but it can sit around with its tentacles extended, waiting for the right cilia to come to it. And when one does, the tentacles go to work, sticking to and sinking into its target. In the area around where the Suctorian's tentacles have attached, the Nasula's cilia will stop beating. But it's just a small portion of the cilia for now, not enough to stop it entirely. And so, for a time, the Nasula will continue swimming, seemingly unaware of the Suctorian on its back. For the Suctorian, this is a good deal. It doesn't need to swim anymore, it has Nasula to do that. But Nasula is more than just a free ride around the microcosmos, it is also the Suctorian's next meal. Sometimes we are what we eat, and sometimes we are what's eating us. And with the Suctorian attached, the Nasula becomes more and more difficult to recognize, looking more and more like a whale with outsized barnacles protruding from its side. Near the site where they have attached to the Nasula, the Suctorian will begin to digest bits of their host. This means that the Nasula now has three uses for the Suctorian, a free ride, a meal, and now a temporary external stomach. Like the cilia that stopped beating, this digestion is localized, allowing the Nasula's organelles to contract and the organism to live as it is slowly being digested from within. The Suctorian does not have an oral cavity to act as a mouth, but it doesn't need one. It has tentacles, which shorten in length and thicken in width as the Suctorian begins to pass grains of the digested ciliate through it. And the Nasula, once kaleidoscopic with the remains of its own meals, will now pass those colors onto its unwelcome passenger. For some Suctorians, one host is not enough to satiate its appetite, 
If you look at the top corner of the nasula here, you can see that one of the Suctoria has its tentacles poking outwards, keeping them extended and ready, in case another nasula comes along to add to its meal. And this is not a matter of moving from one host to the next. No, the Suctorian is happy to attach itself to multiple nasula, assembling a crowd of hosts and parasites. But the Suctorian has one more use left for its host. A nest. Not a real nest, of course. Suctorians don't lay eggs. Instead, they bud growing their young out of themselves. And they do this while attached to their host, sprouting their young on the outside of their non-motile bodies until the new larvae is ready for life on its own. The baby Suctorian is equipped with its own cilia, able to swim away for its own independent life. But at the end of the day, Suctorians are parasites. They are not meant to be on their own. So one day, when they're ready, those larvae will follow the path of their parent, settling down for a life on their own meal. It didn't have to be this way, of course. Manasula could have lived its whole life without ever having come across a Suctorian parasite. It could have spent its life contentedly grazing upon cyanobacteria and converting itself into a multicolored monument to its own meals. And many Nasula have lived such lives, meeting their ends in other ways. Perhaps more dramatic, perhaps less. But our world is maintained by these meetings, by these pigments, these chemicals, this energy passing from one organism to the next, and by the fateful contact of some patient, outstretched tentacles. Thank you for coming on this journey with us as we explore the unseen world that surrounds us. And thank you, of course, for all of the support you have shown this channel over the past two years that it has existed, whether that's been through sharing videos with friends and family, or supporting the channel directly by being a patron on Patreon, or by picking up some of our Microcosmos merch, like our new Tardigrade shirt. Again, that pre-order runs only through August 31st, so if you want to make sure you get the color you want before one of them goes away forever, you will have to order before the end of the month over at dftba.com. This episode, it marks the end of Season 4 of Journey to the Microcosmos, but we will be back with Season 5. And speaking of the aforementioned Patreon patrons, you are now seeing their names on the screen. If you like what we do here and you want to thank us for this show existing, these are the people that you should be thanking. We appreciate all of them so much, and if you would like to join them, you can head on over to patreon.com slash journey to micro. If you want to see more from our master of microscopes, James Weiss, check out Jam and Germs on Instagram. And if you want to see more from us, there's probably a subscribe button somewhere nearby.